Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a program manager for Microsoft Azure at Microsoft. And in this video, we're going to have a look how you can run PowerShell scripts or bash scripts against your Azure virtual machines, as well as like orchestrate and schedule these. So you can always be sure that you can do your automation job. So stay tuned. Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to have a look how you can run scripts or automation against your Azure virtual machines uh, and actually schedule these scripts and make sure that you can use an identity to actually run against these to make sure that everything is secure. So in this video, let's have a look at what I have running in my Azure environment first, and then we're going to use different tools and we're going to have a look at these and show you how you can actually run these scripts just using your Azure Active Directory identity, uh, and then have a look how we can actually take this now and making a recurring uh, run book uh, with Azure Automation. So here we are in the Azure portal. And as you can see, I have a couple of virtual machines running here. And usually they have all like different probably logins and passwords like in the operating system as well. So to understand what we can do is, since all of these are Azure VMs, they have the VM guest agent installed. And that is used to communicate with the Azure backend to do like backups and make sure that they're consistent and do some automation tasks. Also when you like do some stuff like shutting down the VM in the portal and things like that. Um, but we can do some other cool things like reset your password or run a couple of scripts. So let me show you uh, that quickly in the portal, but we will then use the command line because that's what we try to achieve later on. So if you go to your Azure Virtual Machine and you have all your great options here, if you scroll down, um, what you have here is run command. And if you hit run command, um, it's a simple tool, like it gives you a couple of options. So you can do your own PowerShell script. That what we, is what we're gonna use in just a bit. But then we also offer you a couple of like very uh, commonly used things you might need, like to, uh, for example, um, disable Windows updates for a while or to like enable PS remoting, to enable Windows updates, to reset, for example, the RDP configuration and so on to make sure that like if you locked yourself out, um, you can basically get back uh, to your machine. So we will run quickly an example here. So a simple one is run IP config. Uh, so if I just want to know the IP configuration of this machine, um, I can see here, uh, this is the command, uh, which is going to run again. If you look at others here, if you for example, go to the RTP settings, you say you see way more complex um, scripts here as well. So again, just run the IP config one. And this will take a while uh, to actually complete and we'll actually go and, and run that script. It now goes and sends off these to the Azure um, control plane. And from the Azure control plane, it connects to the VM guest agent and runs that configuration and then brings back the output from that command. So we just give it a second to complete. And you can see here, I get the, the output of that script. Now, again, the great thing about this is you can run your own PowerShell scripts. So uh, you could like basically run your own commands here uh, or whatever you want to do with this machine. Um, and by the way, that also works with Linux machines. So in that case, you would just run a bash script against that machine or you can like run Python or whatever you basically need on that machine as well. Um, so let's have a look how that actually looks in the command line. Since we want to make this repeatable, we need to have some code. And for that, I'm just going to open up the Windows terminal here with uh, PowerShell. Um, and so let me quickly uh, minimize this and then just bring up um, this one here. So what I can do here is let's, I'm already locked in to my Azure PowerShell, right? So I can do get AC VM. Uh, and what I get here, I get a list of my Azure VMs, the ones you just uh, saw before. Uh, you can see here I have uh, my, for example, my Azure, my TT Azure um, 
uh, win VM01. We're going to use that one as an example throughout the demos here. But you can also see I have a couple of Linux machines as well, and we could also leverage these. You can see the resource group and so on. So there's a commandlet called invoke acvm run command. And if we use that, we can actually go and um, run this command as similar as we did in the portal, but directly from PowerShell. Again, there's also something for the Azure CLI. And if you're using the CLI or PowerShell in CloudShell, that works absolutely fine too there. So um, let's go and um, find that command. Now, you can see here, by the way, if you're asking what this is, this is PowerShell Predictive IntelliSense with the AC Predictor module. Now, what that does is it basically looks at my history of what run commands, and it also looks at documentation and basically suggests commands to me and gives me examples. So if you want to watch a video about this, go to my YouTube channel, you will find that video. Um, and it really is really super helpful, as you can see. Uh, because now I can just go and see, hey, there's an invoke ACVM run command. Let's go there. And you can see here it gives me an example. So it shows me the command itself, it says, okay, I need to add a resource group, I need to add a VM name, and then I need to run um, like the script and give the script path. So I can just hit like, for example, now, Alt A. And so I go to the resource group name, and then type the resource group. So this is Azure VMs RG, then I can hit Alt A again, and then I go to the VM name. And here this is TT Azure win vm01 and then i can go and hit alt a again and basically say hey what script do i want to run i have already a script prepared it's called my script so if we want to have a look at that uh, how that what what's that actually doing it's a very simple script so if i open up visual studio code here it's just running uh, get service so if i go back here um i if i now run that you will see again, this will take a couple of minutes, but basically it's doing absolutely the same thing we just saw in the portal, but it uses a, um, a PowerShell script to do um, that from the command line. And voila, this is the output we are getting. So we get all the services running on that machine as the output. Um, so we can now leverage that and I just use Azure AD, right? If I have a contributor rights to that machine, I can basically use run command uh, to do so. So now if we want to do some more complex things and actually schedule some tasks, so I can go back to the Azure portal. And here I'm going to use a service called automation, Azure automation. And basically what I did already, I created an automation account. And Azure automation is really powerful and it can do a couple of different things. Um, but one thing we're going to look at is the capabilities of running runbooks. And runbooks are nothing else than um, basically a PowerShell or Python uh, script you can run. So for example, if you're going to create one, um, let's do a sample zero one here, I can choose what runtime I want to use. In this case, I'm going to use um, PowerShell. Uh, but you see here also options for Python and on other PowerShell options. But let's go for pa uh, PowerShell here. I can then choose which PowerShell version I want to run. Uh, I could do 7.1 and get the latest uh, and greatest. And then I could just create that. And this creates now a way for me to basically enter a script here. And I can write that and like say, hey, get, uh, get ACVM. And I could automate that. I can then save it uh, and then publish it and then basically use it. Now, where does that run? So that runs on some Azure worker nodes. I don't need to care about these. These are just like spinning up temporarily for me in Azure. So whenever I run this, it will just use one of these Azure nodes uh, and basically run that script. Uh, I can also use my own worker nodes if I want to. That's then called hybrid workers as well. And that allows it to run in my own VMs. So I could run something inside my network uh, as well, right? So if I need to like run it in, in, a, in a VM where I, I need to access through the network and want to automate other VMs, uh, other, other servers, I can do that too. So I already prepared here a runbook called Azure VM Script Runbook. And you can see it's at the moment in edit. Uh, you can see here also it did some runs here before, but let's have a look at the script itself. Um, 
And this is now important, and we'll talk about that uh, just what we're doing here. So ignore the first part here, right? Like let's let's just go into uh, the second part. So what I want to do is I want to create a folder um, on my C drive, right? That that's what I want to do, um, and then I want to run that. Um, against my Azure VMs. Now for invoke VAC VM command to work, we actually need, the VM needs to be running. And in this case, because we're using PowerShell, I want to run it only against Windows systems. Now, again, you could do the same thing um, on run scripts against um, Linux VMs uh, as well. I mean, if they have PowerShell installed, you could also uh, do that. Um, so that is what I wanna do. I also provide some output. I will get out the Azure VMs here. And then here is the magic. So I want to give a for each. So it runs against all my Azure VMs. Uh, it runs that invoke ACVM command. And as you can see here at the end, I just use that script code, which I defined up here. Now, in many cases, your script code there is probably way more um, uh, sophisticated than just a single command, but in some cases, absolutely fair to just like have this single command. The other part here is now, okay, um, with what credentials is that um, script running, right? Because as I told you, you need to have contributor rights to the VMs you want to run this script against, otherwise you don't have access, especially because you're running not on your own systems. So that's the great part here. We can use a managed identity. So I have this command which locks in Azure PowerShell and with the dash identity parameter, uh, you can basically use a system account, like a managed system identity. So we're gonna have a look how that looks like. Um, so if we go back here to the automation account and scroll the way down to uh, identity. What you need to do is you need to turn on um, this identity and then you can do some role assignments. So what I have done here, I gave contributor rights on this specific resource group. So you could basically do role assignments like for subscriptions as well, for resources. Uh, but in this case, I just basically said, hey, you have access to everything or contributor rights to everything in that specific uh, resource group. So now this managed identity, so whenever that like um, automation account runs a script and we use that identity, um, then we can basically leverage whatever permissions we have there. So if I would do a get ACVM in that um, uh, run book, which I'm doing, uh, I only get the VMs in that specific resource group. So no need to like store any passwords or credentials uh, to do that. If you need that for something else, there is also ways to securely store your credentials um, in the automation account um, or in, in, a, in a key vault and then get them out of there uh, when the runbook runs. So don't please don't store any credentials um, in the script itself. So let's go back to the runbook um, and actually go and basically say yes, we've edited that. So since I probably run that before, I will just add a two here so that it creates a, another folder. I hit save and then, so if I'm working on this new version, like if I update this, I could now just hit save and work on it and keep on working. Um, but then if I wanna say, okay, now it's live, it's like ready to use, I hit the publish button and you can say here, get an information that the runbook is now uh, live and overwritten the old one. Uh, by the way, um, you also have Git integration for source control. So you can like work with your um, uh, scripts uh, actually or your runbooks uh, and save them to a Git repo um, and, and make sure that there's a nice um, repository of these runbooks and you have all the, the advantages of using Git. So let's start that um, script and let's just run it. So this, we're gonna start that run book. Uh, and this obviously will take a while to run, but um, so we go to output and we will, it will now go to an Azure uh, worker here. Um, and again, if I hit refresh, the first command now, like is my, my comment, you can see here, I uh, said, hey, please log in um, using uh, our managed identity. And if I hit refresh again, and I waited long enough, I will get like uh, the message that I'm actually successfully um, have logged in using the managed identity. 
you can now see I have now logged in with my managed identity and now it starts to run the script. So um, this is now the output I get because I have put that in my script that I see okay, okay against which uh, systems is this running. So it only runs against um, VMs in that resource group because that's only where I have permissions. Then it checks the VM is running and then it checks that it actually is a Windows machine because this this command like what I just wanted I just want to run against Windows but again you can filter that the way you want and then it will run that and you can see here now it actually completed uh, um, that run book and succeeded I don't have any errors so this is now I created a folder there and it makes it super easy to run this now I know now it works and now maybe I want to do this, maybe not create a folder all the time, but maybe re restart the service or um, uh, do anything like uh, set the registry or uh, um, key or remove a registry key over time. So I can actually go and build a schedule. So I hit link to schedule here and what I can do is define a schedule. So let's add a schedule here and say, hey, first day, um, I mean, maybe you be some, uh, maybe you are a little bit more descriptive than I am, but you can then say, hey, when do we actually want to start? So I say next first day, and then I can actually go and set the time, and I can make this a recurring uh, event and say, hey, let's do that like every week, and every first day we're going to do this, um, no expiration date set. So I hit create, and now I have that schedule. Now, if I want to use the same runbook multiple times, I also have the possibility to use parameters from the from that runbook. So when I schedule this, I could basically say, hey, on first days you have the following uh, parameters, or if you run the same thing um, on Tuesdays, you have different parameters, right? So I can actually go out and set this up. And also it here says again, um, this runs on Azure workers. Um, if you have hybrid workers set up using Azure Arc, then you can also run it on machines on premises, for example. So which is pretty cool to automate and orchestrate machines running on premises or even at other cloud provider. So you can hit OK. And now you link that schedule. And now every first day basically goes out and runs that script um, and, and make sure that it's running. So this is super easy way of automating your um, Azure VMs um, with using Azure automation and schedule these runbooks and orchestrate them and run these scripts against Azure VMs. And again, if you're working with Azure Arc and you want to run these on premises or at other um, servers running at other cloud providers, you can do that too with using hybrid workers. So I hope this video was helpful. If you liked that video, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next one.